Hi, my name's Jason Rowe. I'm a freelance travel photographer, filmmaker, and also tutorial creator for Photosee.com and Lightstalking.com. One of the problems with HDR images is they tend to look very, very unnatural. They also assume that you've taken multiple images at the shooting stage, which is not often the case. There is, however, another way to produce a much better dynamic range from a single raw image, and that is to use luminosity masks. In this brief tutorial, we will take you through how to use luminosity masks. We're going to start with this particular image, which is in Lightroom at the moment, and it's of the Transfer Garrison Pass in Romania. It was taken at dawn on a Nikon using a Nikon NF NEF RAW file. And as you can see, it's very, very contrasty. Um, there's a little bit of golden light on the mountain top there, but the entire sky is blown out. And the rocks and the water and this house over here are all very deep in shadow. Now, we're going to take this over to Photoshop, but the way we're going to do it is not the standard way, which is to go edit, edit in Photoshop. What we actually need to do is open as a smart object. If we do that, it'll take us over to Photoshop, but we'll also be able to double click on that particular layer in Photoshop and reopen it in Adobe Raw, which gives us full control over the image, uh, over the raw image, and makes it much easier to edit. So if we go ahead and we'll open that now in, uh, as a smart object. And as you can see, it's now opened up in Photoshop. Now, if I go to look at the layers, and we go layers there, you'll see here is our, our base image. And what we're going to need to do is double click on that and it will now open in Adobe Raw. So we're going to use this as our base image, but we're going to do a little bit of work to it first of all, just to make sure that uh, as our base image, it works well. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to bring up the shadows a little bit, try and get some definition into those shadows. And we're going to take the highlights down a little bit, and we're going to push the blacks and whites to the extremes of the histogram. So as you can see, as I push the blacks left, you can see that red mark coming up in the top left of the histogram there. And we don't want to go all the way through to yellow, and you can see the blue uh, clipping coming through there. So we'll bring that back until we hardly see any blue in the image. And we'll do the same with the whites, and bring those up until we get just a tiny little bit of clipping in the sky there. So that looks pretty good. We'll maybe just bring up the shadows a little bit more and just add a little bit of vibrance to give us a little bit of extra color. Now, to edit this image, there's an important thing we need to do in Adobe Raw um, in order to get the full luminosity mask thing working. And that is we need to come down here at the bottom and we need to click on this Adobe Raw uh, line down here. We need to make sure that our channel depth is 16-bit. That gives us the maximum amount of information. And we also need to make sure that the Photoshop opening Photoshop as smart objects is ticked, which in this case it is because we opened it as a smart object originally. So we'll click on OK and we'll click on OK again and that will return our image to Photoshop. Now what we need to do is we need to create two duplicates of this. Now we're not going to simply duplicate the layer because that won't work. What we need to do is we need to go to new smart object via copy and that creates a copy of the smart object. And we'll do that once again, uh, new smart object via copy. And we're going to name one of them shadows and we'll name the other one highlights. And as you might guess, what we're going to do with these two layers is create raw files that highlight, that uh, bring in the highlights and that bring up the shadows. So we'll start with this particular highlights one here. And if we double click on that, we'll open it in raw. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the exposure down so that we start to bring the highlights in. Don't need to worry about the shadows. They become completely irrelevant in this particular version of it. So as you can see, we've brought these highlights down and now we've got a sky, we've got some definition with these mountains and clouds in the background there. And that whole highlight area looks a lot, lot better. So we click on OK and we'll return that back to Photoshop. And if we click the other two off, you can see now that's our image. 
So we'll put the other two back on and we'll go to the shadows la uh, layer. Double click on that and we're going to do kind of the reverse on this. We're going to keep the highlights where they are and we're going to bring the shadows up by bringing the exposure up. Don't have to come too far. Um, you'll see that all the highlights are blowing out but we're getting a lot of definition in the actual uh, rocks and the, the landscape here. So what we might do as well is uh, just add a little bit of clarity to that because that'll bring that up in the, in the definition in the rocks as well. And we'll click OK here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our bottom layer and switch the two hi the highlight and shadow layers off. And we're going to go to Channel and we're going to just command click or right or control click depending on whether you're Mac or Windows on the RGB layer. And what this does is it selects the 50% of uh, pixels that are in the highlight are in the above average brightness level. Um, and it selects them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return to layers and we're going to select our highlight layer. And you'll see now that we're just seeing the highlights and not the, uh, the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask from this and it's going to be a black layer mask. So click on the highlights layer and we're going to click on the layer mask and you'll see that we've got a mask now sitting over this. What we need to do is we need to make this mask completely black so it blacks out everything and then we're going to paint that sky back in. So what we do is we go over to edit and fill and we turn the contents to black like that and you'll see that that uh, darkened sky has now disappeared. If we go back to channels Command click on the RGB again, reselect, go back to layers. We select a largish brush. Um, I've got one of about 500 pixels here, a fairly flow, uh, slow flow rate of about 20%. And the brush should be a soft brush as well. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to just paint in the sky and the highlight areas on the mountains here. So as you see the gently painting in over, I'm bringing that sky in and it's not affecting the other parts of the image, the shadow parts of the image. And you just keep painting that in, in the areas where you want the highlights to come in. So as you can see, we've already got the mountains back here. What we can also do is we can bring it up in this uh, areas down in the, uh, the lake here in the pond and the highlights over here as well. So that looks pretty good. Now we're going to switch that layer off. We're going to select the shadows layer here. We're going to come down here and we're going to add a layer mask. We're going to do the same. Edit, fill, turn it to black like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to return to the focus stack level and to channels, command click on RGB to get that selection. Now we're going to inverse that selection. So we're selecting only the dark areas like this. We're going to return to layers, we're going to return to the shadow layer, and we're going to select the shadow mask like this. And we're going to keep the similar brush, largest 500 pixel brush, soft edges, and we have a, a, passive, a flow of around 20%. And we're going to start painting in the dark areas. And as you can see, as I move the brush over these dark areas, they start to become light. And we paint in these little areas over here. Again, because we have just the dark area selected, it's painting in only the dark areas. I'm going to paint in this little bit uh, under the water here. And that looks great. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the beauty of doing it with a, a smart object is we can add some definition and some saturation to the shadow areas, which look still a little bit pale. So we're going to double click on the smart object here, open it up in raw, and we're going to add some dehaze and a little bit of clarity and we're going to add some more vibrance to it. Now we click OK and that looks great and we're going to switch on our middle highlights layer and there you go. If we get rid of the selection 
you can now see that we've got from this image, which was dark in the shadow areas and light in the skies, we've added the skies in and we've added the shadows in. Now this has been a very simple demonstration of what you can do with luminosity masks. Um, it's great for pulling extra definition out of a single raw image, but you can go so much more as well. You can make uh, much finer selections based on the different tonal ranges in the image. You can work on contrast, on color, on vibrance, on textures, um, just to enhance very, very specific areas of the image, all by creating a specific luminosity mask for that part of the image that you want to work in. I hope you've enjoyed this video on luminosity masks. I hope you've got something out of it. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a subscription and a like and a thumbs up. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and even better, a subscription. If you want to stay up to date when we publish new videos, ring the notifications bell. See you all again soon.